tell me the crowd will be this big. <laughs> hey guys. All right, uh, so I have 15-ish minutes, right? 15, 20 minutes, so this has to be succinct and quick and to the point. Three things that I'm not good at, <laughs> so. Uh, so what I, this is supposed to be an inspirational night, right? So I thought what I would do is sort of just give you guys sort of a fast forward through where I started and where I am now and how I got here uh, and why I'm here. So. This Week in Photo, if you, if you haven't heard of This Week in Photo, it is a podcast. We are about to celebrate our 11th year in podcasting, which is kind of a big deal. <laughs> For anything in Silicon Valley, it's a big deal to be around that long. Um, but we are, uh, we're a photography podcast, and we've evolved into a community, a store, and a membership, and all that kind of cool stuff all around photography. But how did I get there? So, rewind back a couple of decades to, to the beginning of me, and I'll tell you a story. So, I am the youngest of five kids, and my closest older brother and I were terrors of the neighborhood. We grew up in this suburban neighborhood in upstate New York, and uh, it was still under construction, like many places around here. Still under construction, which meant there were lots of dirt mounds for us to ride our bikes over and jump our bikes over and have fun. So we used to do that. Us and a bunch of other neighborhood kids would be riding our bikes and jumping our bikes. Uh, we watched this documentary, my brother and I, we watched this documentary one night about this concept of real estate and eminent domain and things like that. I don't know why we're watching it, but we watched it. And we decided that we owned that hill <laughs> that the other kids were jumping on. We own the hill. So we're like, well, if we own the hill, we could charge tolls. <laughs> so we started charging tolls. And the other kids had a nickel to jump their bikes over the hill. We did that for like two days. We made like three bucks or something for two days. And then we had the idea, since we were real estate moguls at the time, we decided, why not sell it? And there was this kid, I remember his name was KJ. Always kind of disheveled, hair was never put together, but you know, he used to brag about how he had a piggy bank and all that stuff. So he said, we tell you what, KJ, you can have the hill, but you gotta give us your piggy bank. He went home, got his piggy bank, gave it to us, we gave him the hill, we no paperwork exchange, whatever. We went back to my brother and I shared a room. We had like the stereotypical sort of bunk bed room, you know, and stuff. So we went back to our room with the piggy bank, we're like, that worked. What are we going to do? That night, a knock on the door from KJ's parents <laughs> came over and said, your, your kids took money from my kid, whatever, so we got in trouble, we gave money up. But, but, you know, I think that point, I kind of trace it back to that point of entrepreneurialism. Um, <laughs> you could do a little and make a lot of money, it turns out. So, not that it's that simple. So, you know, and I kind of look at the next evolution, I'm fast forwarding, this is like a movie that's, you know, I only got 10 minutes left to tell it. Um, the next evolution was sort of the realization that to succeed, it, and this is from my dad, that it, it, it requires insanity and perseverance in order to succeed. And I say those things because what's the incorrect definition of insanity? doing something over and over again and you know and expecting a different result so being an entrepreneur requires that on um, the perseverance side comes from the same think of that think of the, the doing something over and over again expects expecting a different result and then the saying of you know you 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 have to keep doing something over and over again to to succeed at it right so how do you how are you insane and then dedicated at the same time. And I happen to be both of those things. So I'm insane and I persevere. So that's where these, these things like This Week in Photo, the podcast came from. Because over the years it started, This Week in Photo started as a hobby for, for all intents and purposes. A friend of mine, Leo Laporte and uh, Alex Lindsay started the show way back when, like 12 years ago or whatever. And it was just a, hey, let's do it. People like photography, let's do something called photography. You know, This Week in Photo. So they decided to do it. At the time, I was working at Adobe. I was a senior marketing manager at Adobe, managing Photoshop and you know stuff like that. And uh, 
and then Adobe decided one day to lay off 800 people in one day. Guess who was one of them, right? So it was literally the walking dead going out of the campus in San Jose of people crying and it was just bad. So uh, at that point I decided, you know, let me figure out what my next steps are or whatever, as we all, many of us have been there. And uh, Alex called up, he said, hey, we're, we're going to dissolve this this week in photo thing. You know, we're not getting along, so we're just going to, we're going to shut it down and not do that anymore. I said, you know what, give it to me. I know marketing, I've been doing marketing for these high-tech companies. Let me see if I can apply some of that logic to this thing. No one knows what podcasting is, but that's great, because no one will see me mess up. So, <laughs> so we did that, fast forward again, and TWIP, This Week in Photo, took off. It turns out people like photography. If you go back, if you go to thisweekinphoto.com and listen to some of the early episodes, you'll hear how horrible I was on those shows. It was just ridiculous. But through perseverance and insanity, and I just kept going, kept going, and kept going. It got a little bit better, a little bit better. And then the audience was growing and growing and growing, etc. And then suddenly I started getting calls from you know, large photography companies to advertise on the show and sponsor and all that sort of thing. So it was organic. None of it was planned. None of it. Like I say, it was perseverance and insanity. It was like, okay, I'm going to do this thing. I like doing that. I'm going to do more of that. On and on and on and on and on. So now you fast forward to today. Where is this weekend photo today? So the site itself is basically a repository for a podcast show notes. Like I said, it's about 11 years old now. Um, the email list is around 150, 160,000 strong. The site gets about 30,000 subscribers to the podcast per episode, and we release one or two episodes a week. Uh, we have a community that's a paid subscription community, and all these things came about from just me sort of experimenting and saying, hey, look, hey, WooCommerce is pretty cool. Let me see if that works. Let me try this, and WordPress, and learning all these different things. So, being insane, persevering, <laughs> and being a lifelong learner, right? So, being insane, meaning you're irrational, <laughs> and excited about things, and you will continue doing it, even in the face of, this is, you know, no money's going to come out of it, there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, rainbow, keep doing it. Perseverance, just keep plowing on, and then lifelong learner, the thirst for learning new things, right? And that's where I am. That's, that's basically who I am. So even today, we're about to, before I came down here, uh, we're redesigning the site for Black Friday and taking it from a podcast on WordPress, a school over on this thing, and a community over here to all under one umbrella, and all kinds of cool stuff that goes along with that. So that makes sense from a marketing standpoint, but it also makes sense from a Frederick likes to build ships and bottles standpoint. <laughs> so, so I'm tinkering, I'm, I'm learning new things, I'm learning about this plugin to make the members do this and have them have these capabilities, all that stuff. So in the end, what makes up this week in photo is the my love of photography my love of learning new things, my love of technology, and my love of learning. So that's This Week in Photo. That's me. So I'll leave you guys with this. So, uh, and another story I'll close on. So I'm a little bit older than probably a lot of you in here. So I started shooting, yes, I I started shooting, I was, uh, I went to the Air Force in 1989. Remember that year? Anybody? That was when the planet was fun. So, <laughs> 1989, I went to the Air Force as a combat photojournalist. And I spent eight years in there learning photography and, you know, sort of getting it in my blood. And uh, the, the main thing that I take away, people ask me this a lot, one of the main things I take away from that experience is that photography, no matter the gear, no matter the new iPhones that come out, no matter the new cameras, the megapixel this, new lenses, whatever, photography remains the same because it's based on physics and light and all that, right? Uh, but the other thing to overlay on that, if you shoot it, photograph people, is the psychology of it, right? So, which makes it kind of the ideal hobby 
because it's equal parts psychology, technology, and learning, right? So you have this gear that you get to play with, it's always revving, because people always want more money out of you. You get the psychology piece of it, whether it's you trying to motivate yourself to go out and capture a new landscape, or you trying to convince a subject that they look great and to get into the right pose, all this stuff, it all works together. It was different last week than it is this week, and it will always be different. So I would challenge all of you to always be a lifelong learner, always be insane, and always persevere.